Welcome to another episode of Ed Talks Daily. I'm your host, The Holistic. And today I'm going to be talking about trusting God with your future. Trusting God with your future is surrendering your will to God's will, knowing that the plans that he had for you, that he declared is going to come through no matter what it looks like. It is a trust process of giving your life to the hands of the Most High. Rather than putting your trust in men, you put your trust in God. Because you say, if I know that God said something, his words will not only will never return void and he will come through. So even when hope deferred and your heart gets sick, you still trust him that everything is going to work out somehow in your favor. Keep tapping into this episode of Ed Talks Daily as I talk about trusting God with your future. Let's get it. Ed Talks Daily is all about growth in all aspects of your life. How do you solidify a holistic mindset that will lead to healthy, healthy mindset that will lead to healthy body, healthy relationships, and into and spirit? Join me on this journey to becoming the best version of ourselves. If you want a podcast that will motivate you, inspire you, all while educating you on ways to personally develop, then Ed Talks Daily is for you. Find Ed Talks Daily on your favorite podcast app by going to edtalksdaily.com. And there you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Let's get it. Trusting God with your future. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by trusting God with your future? It's hard to trust God with your future if you don't have a relationship with him in the present. That means you're going to have to have a relationship with him in the present to trust him for your future. And I was literally talking about this. I was like, yo, you know how many times you start talking to somebody and you start making plans like you're going to be together forever? And then in a few months, in a few weeks, sometimes it'd be quicker than a few weeks, all those plans that you made go out the window. And it's like. And eventually later on, it's hard for you to make future plans with people you start dating or talking to because you always you have this fear that even if you start making these plans, these plans are not going to go into fruition. Like you feel as if no matter how many plans that I make with them, eventually these plans are going to get bust. They're going to go bust and going bust is just a slang way of saying they're not going to come through. It's going to be a waste of time. It's going to be a waste of energy. Let me tell you something. With God, it's never a waste of time. It's never a waste of energy. And his plans for you will not only come through, but he will see it through and he will be with you always, never forsaken you. So this is a guarantee. Good to see you, Mike. And this is a guarantee knowing that Lord will be with you always. So when Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. He meant that. He meant that. And it's the truth that will set you free. Knowing that put your trust in God. Don't put your trust in man or woman. I'm not saying not to trust others. But I'm saying the one that we know who will see it through to the future is God. So never put anyone above God. Never put anyone above him. Because anybody that you make plans with, they not they might not be with you. How many friends that you had that are no longer your friends? How many people that you dreamed with that are no longer part of your dreams? And let me ask you a question. Will you be able to, will you forsake God for people who will forsake you in a heartbeat? Will you disobey God for people who will leave you this fast? Don't disobey God for other people because when you look around, the God will keep being with you. They're going to leave. They might leave. They Let me not say that because that's from a place of trauma. 
God's going to be with you and they might not always be. Right? Because there's a might to that. So what I'm saying is, if anybody is getting in your way between trusting God and trusting them, you better trust God because you don't know if they're going to be there or not. But one thing you know for sure is that God's going to be there. What's one thing you know for sure? God is going to be there. What's one thing that's guaranteed? God will never forsake nor leave you. What's one thing you could count on? The presence and the spirit of the most high God to guide you through tough times. So if you're dealing with somebody and they're like, I don't know what guy you talk about. Like you always talk about God. If you want to be with me, you got to leave God alone. You better tell them like, can you ensure me for sure, for sure that you will never leave nor forsake me no matter what. Can you ensure me that you got unlimited grace? That you got unlimited mercy. Can you ensure me that? And most likely, here's what here's what they're, here's what they're gonna say. No, actually, I can't ensure that. Can nobody put a promise that they have grace for you no matter what you do? Everybody got a limitation on their love. That's why it's not unconditional. Everybody got a condition. You might say there is. I got unconditional love. Wait till your condition pop up. None of no human on this earth can possibly say. That I got unconditional love. And the reason why is we all have something that will break the camel's back. So nobody on this earth has unconditional love no matter how much they say. It. I used to want to have unconditional love until what I realized unconditional love meant. And I was like, I think I'm going to leave that one to God. I used to, I used to want to have unconditional love for others. And then I realized love without any conditions, it will break you down. <laughs> and somebody says, what you mean by that? Let's say somebody does some things in your life that you that is horrible for you. And you got unconditional love. What, what does that mean? That means you're going to have to keep them in your life no matter what. I'm not talking about the unconditional love to forgive and let people go from your heart. I'm talking about the unconditional love to forgive and let them stay in your life. And I, the Lord said, love your enemies. Love your enemies. You can love your enemies, but none of us can keep them around like Jesus kept Judas around. So no matter how much people try to say unconditional love, they don't really know what that is. Can't no human have that unconditional love that God has. I mean, if I am wrong, let me comment in the chat right now. Tell me I'm wrong and, I, and, I, and, I'll, and, I'll, and, I, and I'll ask you why and then go ahead and tell me why I'm wrong. You all have some sort of condition to it, to it. Now, you might say a mother have unconditional love. I've seen mothers who don't have unconditional love. There is something that there is. Everybody got one thing. So all I'm not, I'm not saying this to make people look bad. I'm not saying this to diminish humans. I'm saying this to tell you this one thing. That the one that we could put our full trust in is not people, but it, it is God. We... That means that we got to trust in the Lord. We don't trust in leaders. We don't put trust in in in, in, in God in America I trust, but it, it's in God I trust. It's not in the holistic motivator you trust, but it's in God I trust. It's not even in your mom or your father or your dad or it's all in God that you must trust. You got to trust God. So when it says here Put your trust in the Lord. That's 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 the blueprint. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. So when we trust God with our future, we have to submit and we got to stop leaning to our understanding of how things should be working. Stop standing under your beliefs, but grab on to the promises of God. That's how we are able to submit. If God says this is what you're going to do, trust that he's going to make a way. He's going to make your path straight towards what he's going to do. This is going to give you a patience that is unlike no other. Because you're going to remember, the Lord says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. What is that going to do for you and your soul? It's going to allow you to stay steadfast towards what God has in store for you, no matter what it looks like. 
sometimes you're going to look at your life and you're going to say to yourself it does not look like what god promised me sometimes you're going to look at your life and you're going to say i thought i would be married by now but you're trusting god sometimes you're going to look at your life and you're going to say i thought i would have my finances in order by now but you're going to trust god sometimes you're going to trust him and you're not going to lean unto your own understanding let's not forget the latter before the former because some of us the reason why we're getting our current results is because though we are trusting god we're leaning to your own understanding but here's the problem you got to submit your ways to his ways the reason why we be running in circles is because sometimes god put many our plans in a man's heart but at the end it is the lord's purpose that prevails so trusting god for your future it's not so much focused on the plans that in your, that is in your heart, but it's also is mainly focusing on the Lord's purpose. Sometimes we're running around in circles because we're constantly we're not listening to the plans that God got. We're not trusting Him enough to move with the ideas He places in our souls. A lot of people don't understand that ideas is is, is way is is the way that God even makes your path straight he makes a path straight towards a destination with an idea he's a lamp into your feet and a light into your path and then light bulb pops up in your head and guess what we normally do we 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 we, we, we put up we block out the light with our limiting thinking but what if we started to trust God with our future enough to say, I don't really know for sure that this is going to work, but I know you can make all things work for the good of me because I trust you, God. And guess what? You keep staying persistent towards it. The reason why most people don't stay persistent towards a dream, towards a goal, towards a vision, towards what God put in their heart is because they are not trusting and they're not trusting that God's going to come through. Don't say with your mouth, but don't believe it in your heart. You got to trust him. So it's hard to trust people. I've been let down by so many people. I feel like I don't even want to make plans with people no more. Here's another one. It says, commit your way to the Lord. You see that commitment? Submission. Let's write this down. I choose to commit and submit to the Most High God. Commitment and submission. When you commit and you submit, this is, this is the blueprint. Commit and submit. It says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust Him. And He will do this. He will make your righteous rewards shine like the dawn. Your vindication, your vindication like the noonday sun. What's happening is the lack of commitment and the lack of trusting. And the thing is, once we start committing and we start trusting God, we're going to start, start accepting any a situation, no matter how it looks like, if it's according to God's will. And I'm not saying we're not going to pray for bigger and better things. I'm not saying that you're not going to make your requests known. But you're going to trust the wilderness part of your life. You're going to trust that the singleness season in your life serves a purpose. You're just going to have a certain trust. Like, okay, I, I understand right now I'm single. But I know that whatever God is doing, I trust him. I understand that right now things are looking tough for me financially, but whatever God is doing, I trust him. Can we say that whatever God is doing, I trust him? Not whenever God is doing what I want him to do, I trust him. We should say whatever God is doing, I trust him. Because when we only want God to do what we want him to do, is God your servant or are you a servant of God? No, answer that question. Are you a servant of God or is God your servant? Remember, you serve God. So you have to trust him 
Even when it doesn't look like you want it to look like. You got to keep trusting God even when it doesn't look like you want it to look like. Because by trusting him, you're telling him, you're telling God that it doesn't matter if you don't do what I want. What matters is that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But the moment we want God to do exactly what we want him to do. And we don't trust what he's doing is working for our favor. This is the moment that we start making ourselves who, who God's supposed to serve. And trusting God means that whatever you got going on for me right now, God, that's good. So sometimes the reason why we run away from doing the plan that God got for us and we go to our plan is because we say, well, God's plan is not working, so I'm just going to go to my plan. You abandon ship too fast. Like he had you working on this dream, on this vision, but it, you just kept being so disappointed that it's not working in the way. So you stop doing it and you start picking up your own thing. And you started picking up your own thing and then you wondering, you're like, oh, I don't know why this thing is not working for me. You know why it's not working? Because you abandoned the ship. It probably was going to take you five years to become the type of person in order to make it happen. But the issue is you wanted it to happen in the first year. And the reason why God don't let things happen so quickly is because he's actually refining He's refining you so that when you get there, you can keep it. He wants you to bear fruit season after season. So some of you, you've abandoned ship on your dream, on your vision. That business idea, it was a God appointment. I'm telling you, I'm speaking to somebody right now. That business that didn't work in the first six months... God appointed that business. But you gave up on it too fast because you wanted it to succeed right away. But you didn't understand that the Lord was, he's the one who blesses. And sometimes he's like, I'm not going to let you succeed by your hand. I'm going to refine you till you are able to focus on kingdom business in your business. And he's been doing that in your life. But then you gave up too fast. And by gave up means you didn't just you didn't go and get a source of income to support your business. You went and replaced your business with your source of income. And the Lord is calling you up out of you just maintaining to you actually going forth and doing what he called you to do. Let us get out of the season of just survival. And let us trust God with our future enough that we're able to even suffer in the present. Are you able to suffer in the present? Knowing that the promises of your future are, are like a fact. Can you suffer in the present knowing that the promises that God got for your future is a fact? It's not if. It's for. I know. It's not I think. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. We have to not just say these things anymore. We got to believe them in a way where we're like... If God knows the plans he has for me, if this idea keep popping up in my head and in my soul, if it never wants to go away, why doesn't this idea want to leave me? Have you ever thought about that sometimes? Have you ever thought about why certain ideas won't leave your mind? Why you feel called to work with children? Why you feel called to start that? That nonprofit organization? Have you ever thought about that? Some of you like you you you're really thinking like it's just in my head. 
Or, you know, maybe I'm just making it up. Maybe it's something I always just wanted to do. It's not, bro. It's not something that's just in your head. This is some some of this. This is answer. This is the answer to your to what it is that that your soul has been craving. This is an answer to what you are feel like you are missing. God got an answer for what you feel like you're missing in your life and it it is plaguing your mind every day. Some of you right now. You got to trust him with your future. When the bills are not getting paid, you got to trust him with it. When 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 it seems like you got to trust him so much that on your last in your on your last, you're like, if this is the plan you have for me, Lord, I'm gonna keep doing it. Watch how doors start opening. Some of us we want doors to open without friction. But the doors open when the most friction is occurring. When you when you're about to give up and you're like, let me keep going. This is how champions are made. Champions are made in a moment of wanting to give up. And I'm letting you know right now, when you feel like throwing in the towel, you feel like giving up, God is saying, I want to know if he trusts me, if she really trusts me. You think God, God thinks you just trust him because you said you trust him? God knows you trust him the moment where it looks like you, you wouldn't trust him. But then that's when you, you're going in the hardest. He's like, oh yeah, she really trusts me. It's like you are praying to God for your marriage. Let's give another example. You praying to God for your marriage. And then it seems like everything in your marriage is going wrong. And typically, what your mind will tell you is, let me throw in the towel. I'm about to be, I'm done with this. But then God sees, instead of you saying, I'm done with the marriage. You done now became Anna. You praying and pleading. And, and, and you working on yourself, working on the marriage. The most. God's like, oh yeah, they really, they really do trust me on that. So some of you, you think that sometimes God is telling you to abort ship when it gets hard. But he's testing to see how much you really trust him. He's like, do you say it with your mouth? Or will your action show me that you trust me? You know how many times I felt like giving up what I'm doing right now? I'm not even going to lie to you, bro. So many times. But every time that I keep it going, God literally sees that. He's like, yeah, that's my son right there. He, he really believes the vision. Your persistence and endurance through the chaos and the challenges shows God that you believe in the vision. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand says the Lord. Do not fear because God is with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. And I will strengthen you and help you and help hold you. So we said there's a couple of key words to trusting God with your future. It starts with trusting the Lord. Not leaning on your own understanding. And then it says submission and commitment. I will trust. I will lean not to my own understanding. I will submit to God, I will commit my way, and I will not fear nor worry about tomorrow. Matthew 6 verse 34 says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. When you really trust God, we don't worry about tomorrow. We let tomorrow worry about itself because you really trust God. Somebody says, 
How are you so certain that this business or this idea that God put in your heart is really going to work? You really mean to tell me you're going to quit your job and go about doing this? You're like, yeah, absolutely. They're like, no, this person crazy. You have to be willing for other people to think that you're crazy. If you're not willing to think, let other people think that you're crazy, then it's going to be hard for you to succeed. You got to be willing to be criticized. You got to be willing to be criticized, y'all. You got to be willing for other people to say like, bro, they still doing this? You got to be willing to show up online and there's nothing on your social media. You got one person, two people, three people. You got to be willing to commit to the vision that God put in you. Because only you are going to carry out that vision. And you got to be willing to suffer, to sacrifice, to show up with nobody day in, day out. Commitment is not... Everything is going in the way I'd like for it to go, so I'm committed. Commitment is, everything is not going in the way I thought it would go. I'm still here, right here. Henny, I'm strong. Commitment is, I started, nobody signed up for my thing. I'm still showing up. Commitment is, two people's watching. I'm still showing up. Commitment is, 200. Then 200 back to two. I'm still here. Because the Lord got a plan for me, and I trust the plan. I trust the plan. When you trust the plan, you don't stop going to the, through the plan because it's difficult. That's when you go the most. Commitment is when, when things look like literally God let the enemy come and, and, take, and do things against me. It looks like God literally gave the enemy permission to sift you. You got to say, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm still showing up every day. This is commitment. Commitment is a comes out of a trust not in people you can make plans with people today they gone tomorrow like i said i don't like making plans with people no more that's why i make plans i let god make the plans in my life now because when you make plans with god you know that he will come through his words don't return void We have a certain level of commitment when we put our trust in the Lord, when we are not scared, when we don't worry about tomorrow, when we trust in him with all of our heart, when we lean not unto our own understanding and in all the ways we submit to him and he makes your path straight. And we got to say, God didn't give me these ideas for him to leave me because he will never leave me nor forsake me. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. Do you trust God with all of your heart? That's how you are able to trust God with your future. When you trust God with your future, when you commit all of your ways and, and your things to him, you will have a peace that surpasses understanding. It's like, it looks like nothing's working. You're like, but God got me though. I'm straight. Because you trust him. So trust God with your future. Whether you're single right now, you don't understand what's going on. If you're ever going to get married, trust God with your future. Whether you broke right now, you don't know if your finances are ever going to change, trust God with your future. Whether you're sick right now, you don't know if you're ever going to get healed, trust God with your future. Whether you're angry with life right now, whether your family looks like it's, it's over the top, trust God with your future. No matter what it looks like, whether the dreams and visions God put in you, it, didn't, it doesn't seem like it's going to work out in your favor. Trust God with your future. Your trust is necessary when at the point where you don't even know if it's going to work. This is when you need to trust him. And 
I want to pray for you before you go and as we finalize this episode of Ed Talks Daily because I want to remind you that the trust you have in God is what's going to keep you still. This is what's going to give you this is what's going to give you a peace that surpasses understanding. Father God, I thank you for this episode of Ed Talks Daily. I ask that you can work in our hearts that after we've listened to this, no matter when somebody have listened to this episode, that they can trust you. That they can say that the plans you have for them will come into fruition. That they can trust you with their finances, with their relationships, with their mental health. They can trust that you will never forsake them and that whatever you put in them to reveal, whatever fruit that you put in them as a seed of their gift, that they can bear much fruit and they will bear much fruit. That they will have the resilience to show up each and every single day, never losing faith, not growing weary and well-doing, but in all the ways committing their lives to you. That they will stay steadfast towards the destiny that you've already predestined because you have written the eternity in the, ma in the hearts of men. And they will have a taste of what it is like to believe you in the beginning because you will see it to, through to the end. May you restore anybody's belief in you that may have fallen, that may have been deterred, deferred because their hope has deferred and their hearts are sick. We ask that you heal their hearts and that they may be at peace knowing that you will do all things that you have promised. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So to finalize today's episode, put your trust in God, not in people. Commit your ways to Him. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, trust the Lord and He will make your path straight. The Lord will be a lamp unto your feet and a light on your path. But just keep walking with him and trust that whatever he said he was going to do, he's already done it. But it's up for you to stick through the pain. And that's how you're going to grow through the pain. And that's my message. And I'm sticking to it. It's the Holistic Motivator. And if you enjoyed this podcast episode, please make sure you leave a review on your favorite podcast app. Go to edtalksdaily.com if you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast. And if you're watching live, make sure you like this video and share it. Like this video and share it. And those on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here. With that being said, have a beautiful, blessed rest of your day. And remember, you have the power of Christ within you to achieve whatever he has destined for you to achieve. But first, you got to believe it and believe in him. And until that happens, the world will forever miss all your talents, all your gifts, and all the great things you have to offer. So remember, let your light shine. Don't hide it. Don't dim it. It's the holistic motivator. And you have a beautiful and blessed rest of your day. Peace.